In this video, let's take a look at getting started with the ARA version of Repitch inside Pro Tools. So first things first, let's take a quick listen to the vocal track that we're going to be working with. I'd fight all your fire, carry your pain until it's lighter. If I could, I would cry all your teardrops, wash them away, lift you up higher. If I could, I would take your place. So one of the amazing things about working with an ARA-based DAW and the ARA version of Repitch is that it's so simple to get this sent over to Repitch. So I'm just going to right-click this clip, let's head over to Repitch, and let's choose the option to edit. Now you can see that this has instantly been brought over to Repitch. Now before we get started, let's go over some navigation basics. If you hold down the Shift and Command modifier on a Mac or Shift and Control on a PC, we have the ability to click, hold, and drag to reposition. So this can be useful if you're zoomed in and you need to kind of move the contents. Now, if we hold down the Option and Command modifier on a Mac or Alt Control on a PC, we have the ability to dynamically zoom, and this happens both horizontally and vertically. So if you need to very quickly zoom into a very specific section, it's easy to just use a combination of those modifiers to get there. Now, in addition to that, we also have a couple other shortcuts that are useful. So for example, if we have selected multiple different pitch blocks, if we choose the Z key, notice that this kind of zooms this into view. And then if we choose the forward slash key, this will play that highlighted selection of pitch blocks. Fight all your fire, carry your pain. In addition to that, we have this scroll bar at the very bottom over here. And we can also click, hold, and drag to extend the handles on the left and right side. Kind of using a combination of all of these can allow you to navigate quite quickly. Now let's talk about some of the basic tools. Well, we have our main selector tool, and this kind of works as you would expect if you're familiar with working with any pitch correction tool. We can click and hold a different pitch block, and then we can quite simply make any changes that we need to with respect to tuning. Now, in addition to that, we also have a mode that is the center notes tool. If we make a highlighted selection across multiple pitch blocks, notice that here we have a correction amount. If we dial this up, you can see that everything is kind of just snapping to the average pitch center based on each one of these pitch blocks. And also we have a drift option in here as well. So let's undo that and let's take one look at another tool. If I head over here, we have the option to enter the split tool. Also I wanna make mention that regardless of which tool we're using, my command modifiers for my zoom shortcuts, they will work regardless of which tool that we're using. So that's really useful. Let's say you have a white pitch trace over here, which tapers either up or tapers down. When you're working with tuning correction in general, it's a really good idea to separate these different segments because I think this is actually meant to be interpreted as two different notes. Quite simply, just make a little snip here and we can scroll across everything if we want to take a look at different sections. So for example, maybe this one over here, I wanna separate that into a different note. That way, any tuning that's being applied will be applied to each one of these individually. Next up, let's take a look at the draw tool. This is a very, very useful feature because in the case where, for example, you might want to redraw what a pitch trace should look like, if I wanted to kind of follow this vibrato, we actually have the ability to simply click, hold, and drag, and we can completely redraw our pitch trace. Now, this is something that is actually only available in Repitch Standard, so that's not something that you get in Repitch Elements. In addition to that, we have a completely different way that we can work, which is with the Shaper tool. And when we click the Shaper tool, we have the ability to add these different shape points. And once you've added these on the actual pitch trace that you see in this view, from here we have the ability to click, hold, and drag. We can even drag across multiple different shape points. We can hold the Alter Option modifier, and we can kind of move these freely. So this can be a really, really useful. So as opposed to actually trying to separate a pitch block into multiple different sections, and then trying to double click them and find a way to get them all to smoothen out, if you have a pitch trace such as this and you wanted to adjust this, using the Shaper tool is a really, really easy way that we can do this, quite simply by clicking these different points, locking down whatever points you want to the left and to the right, and then just adjusting things just like this. And like I mentioned, we can also click, hold, and drag to adjust multiple ones. This can sometimes sound much more natural than if you were to just do this by separating these different sections. Now, speaking of separating the different sections, if you did want to take that approach and I had this separated into multiple different areas and I wanted to essentially manually move these, I'm going to switch over to the selector tool for a moment. 
I'm just going to click, hold, and drag. Now, notice as we place our cursor over here that on the top we get this icon, and then on the bottom we have a different icon. We actually have the ability to basically lock the horizontal movement and prevent any accidental timing changes simply by enabling this feature. Now, regardless of where we click, we can simply click, hold, and drag these, and we can adjust these to taste. Now, if the idea was to smooth this out, in Repitch Standard, we also have the Smooth Joint tool. So with all of these selected, I can simply right-click, and then I have the option to Smooth Join Notes. Also notice we have a key command here as a shortcut. The interesting thing about this is that it can be done multiple times, and we can stack this upon each other. So once we have something that we've dialed in and we've separated this, we can smooth join that. Double click to play from within the ARA editor. To up higher. So using a combination of these different tools, you can get some pretty amazing and transparent results. So now that we've covered some of the basics, let's take a look at basically doing a really, really quick tuning pass. I'm gonna right click, we will choose the option to select all. I'm gonna right click again, and then we have the options to reset selected notes. We can reset pitch, timing, level, and all changes. I'm going to reset all changes. So this is essentially bringing us right back to the very beginning where we were as a starting point. I'm gonna use a combination of these different tools to kind of navigate, and let's do a quick pass of this. So I'm gonna be using manual tuning tools, and I'm gonna be using some of the tuning tools that are automatic. The first thing I wanna do is switch to the split tool, and let's put a note separation over here. Now I'm going to switch to the center notes tool and let's see what we can do just by dialing these up right over here. That looks like it's pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to switch again, put a little slice here. If you're already on a tool, such as the split tool, if we click the same shortcut again, this will toggle us back to the main tool. So clicking S again brings me back to my arrow tool. In this case, I'm actually going to select all of these and I'm going to quite simply double click and this will snap these all to 100%. Until it's lighter. Now, if I have any area that I think I hear something and it might be a little bit better if it was sung a little bit different, keep in mind, we can move to the draw tool, for example, and I can quite simply redraw this transition of this pitch trace. And if there's any other areas that seem a little bit jagged to me, I could, for example, quickly move to the shaper tool and we're gonna just add some quick nodes over here so that we can kind of lock things down, put one at the very end. I think what I'll try to do is probably lift up these two, I'll highlight across these, hold the alter option modifier, bring this up a little bit. This one over here, I'm gonna bring this down and then maybe both of these together, I'm gonna to use the alter option modifier. So I have just manipulated the actual pitch trace versus actually snipping this. Free your pain until it's lighter. If I could, I would cry. Okay, that one over there. I wanna do the same thing here. So again, we're gonna dynamically zoom in. We'll make sure that we're on the shaper tool and we're gonna select these different points over here. And I'm going to just hold the alter option modifier. Let's bring this in. And I can also lock down a point underneath if I wanted to kind of like pull this down and I could lock down a point at the end. But also if this isn't going quite the way that we want, we also have the ability to just grab the draw tool over here and I could just try to kind of like smoothen this transition out and let's see what this sounds like. We'll play from here, double click. If I could, I would cry up. Okay, so that doesn't sound too bad, but it does sound a little bit jagged over here. So maybe what we might do is kind of like try to join these together. Let's move on. We'll double click to play from within the editor. All your teardrops, wash them away. Okay, in this section over here, I might want to make an adjustment and let's use the shaper tool again. We're gonna add some shape points over here. They're already there from the last time. And I'm just gonna drag these up just until I'm happy with the way everything works. And I can drag across these two, bring them down together. Maybe this one can come up a little bit. I'm away, lift you up higher. Now in this case over here, I'm gonna make sure I'm on the selector tool. Let's highlight all of these. We'll double click, which will snap these. In this case, these two don't match up quite right. So let's use the M tool a couple times to kind of like smoothen out that transition because we can stack the smooth joint tool. Let's have a play. If I could, I would cry all your teardrops, wash them away, lift you up higher. If I could, I would. Now this last area over here, this very last phrase. If I could, I would take. This is a little bit sharp. So what we can do is just make a selection across these. I'm gonna bring the center notes tool up. 
Let's adjust that. You see it brought this one down, it brought this one up, and we can also adjust the drift and see if this helps fix things, but we can also stack multiple different tools on top of each other. So I might want to add some actual shaper points to help myself smoothen this transition out over here. Let's go back to our main selector tool for this one. I'm going to zoom in and let's make a highlighted selection. I can decrease the modulation. In addition to that, I can adjust the drift from this corner and then I can use the correction slider amount which will dial me up between 0 and 100%. So based on the changes I made, this is now should be 100% in tune. Now once you're done and you want to have a really quick way to actually AB the differences between these, I'm just going to dynamically zoom in so that I can hear everything. Let's place our cursor over here. If you use the B key, this will simply bypass everything. So this is before. Fight all your fire, carry your pain. Until it's lighter If I could I would cry all your teardrops Wash them away And after Fight all your fire Carry your pain Until it's lighter If I could I would cry all your teardrops Wash them away Lift you up higher If I could I would take your place the only thing that's really kind of standing out to me here is this very last section. I could zoom in and I could smooth this out. This would probably be a case for the shaper tool. Just adding a couple nodes over here so that we can lock things down. And then I would just kind of tame each one of these on a case by case basis, just until I'm happy with that. And if I need to, I can also adjust this beginning transition point over here. Maybe I just want to bring that up a little bit. A lot of these tools that I'm talking about and a lot of the things that I'm doing, it is available in Repitch Elements and not just Repitch Standard. Now, if you wanted to make any creative changes, another thing that you can do as well is you can engage formant shifting on this. So if you have a formant shift that's been engaged, we have the ability to essentially dial this up. So take a listen to what happens here. Fight all your fire, carry your pain. This can be a really Until nice creative effect. If I could, I would cry all your teardrops, wash them away. And we can also deselect the formant altogether so there's no formant shifting happening whatsoever. And the formant shifting is something that is available in Repitch Standard, and it's not available in Repitch Elements. The last thing we'll talk about is I'm going to head over to this option over here, and I'm going to click this again. This is going to give us back the ability to adjust the timing. Like I said, in general, my first pass, I like to make sure that I am locking the horizontal movement. But if you need to make any changes to the timing, that's something that you can do simply by click holding and dragging. Now you'll notice you have this heat map that's displayed up above. This is indicating that there's some different processing that's been applied to this. And of course we have the undo directly from within the editor. Now if you want to make any changes to the phrasing or the timing of one entire phrase, So let's say that I'm happy with everything here, but I want to change the timing of all of this. I'm going to choose the main selector tool. Let's highlight everything and take note that if you hover your cursor over the boundary of a pitch block, notice that we can click, hold and drag and notice that it's pretty much locking down everything before and after, and it's just adjusting the phrasing. So we've extended this one note and let's use the forward slash key to addition that. Fire, carry a pain. Let's undo that. Now let's actually go the other way. Let's bring it back this way. And again, the forward slash key to addition. Fire, carry your pain. So depending on what you want to do, there's a lot of different ways that we can adjust the timing and the tuning. Generally speaking though, for small tweaks, you just want to hover your cursor just at the edge of the corner and you can adjust the subtleties of the pocket over here. But anytime you're doing a whole entire phrase, it is definitely worth multi-selecting the pitch blocks because that essentially locks everything down upstream and downstream so that you're not messing anything up. Now, the last thing I'll mention is we also have the ability to undock this editor. If you have multiple different monitors attached to your system and you wanted to have this floating in a monitor that's to the left or to the right, that's something that you can do. And we can click this option over here, which will redock it. And if we click repitch, now we can see it here. Now, before we go, there's one last thing that I want to take a look at. That is having the ability to adjust the levels of your vocal performances directly from within Repitch Standard. If we take a look at any one of these pitch blocks and we zoom in, notice that we have these different control points. If you head over to the center one, if we click, hold and drag, notice that we can increase the size of the actual amplitude of that particular phrase in that pitch block. Let's undo that and let's select a multiple selection of different pitch blocks over here. 
And now let's bring them all down and notice that we can decrease. So if you're doing just basic like macro editing and you have the odd word that pops out, this is a really quick and easy way to be able to fix that is just by moving through and you can adjust the levels as you're tuning and as you're adjusting drift. But another function that we have is we have a detailed display over here. If we click the L keyboard shortcut or we click this option to engage the level display, now notice that we have a completely different display that's available. Now you can still use your modifier keys in terms of being able to zoom. But the way that this works is that if you click, hold and drag any one of these phrases, we can simply just bring the level down. And also if you hold down the alter option modifier key, it's going to snap to increments. Now, like I said, this is useful, especially if you're working with a different phrase that may have been part of a different comp and you have different words that pop out as being too loud or too low, you can really quickly adjust these. But another thing that's very useful is if you take a look at this section over here, notice we have the purple trace over here, which is indicated that this is an actual sung performance, part of a pitch block, but also we have these green sections. Watch what happens if I highlight one of these. This is quite simply a breath. So we could decrease this or we could increase this on a case by case basis. The other thing to point out is that anything over here that you see that is available in green, this is actually not being processed. If there's any pitch correction that's being done, this is being isolated and there is no processing that's being applied to this. So we can very quickly just double click. Drops, wash them away. If you want to bring down any of these sections, we can just click, hold and drag across this green area over here. Now, the last thing I want to mention with respect to working with Repitch Standard versus Repitch Elements is that if you are a Vocaline user, we have the ability to enable SynchroLink. And this is a really amazing feature that allows Repitch Standard to integrate and work hand in hand with Vocaline. You also have the ability to enter scales. So I tend to leave this in chromatic, but if you do know the scale that you want to work with, you could simply select the scale, choose the major or minor. We could add this. Then we actually have the ability to choose different scales scales versus just working in chromatic. Now, as soon as you're done and you're happy with your results, it is really easy to render the ARA version. All we have to do is simply right click, head over to repitch, and then we have the option to render. So let's go ahead and render those actual changes and let's take a listen to our final result. But let's actually listen to that in context with the actual instrumental of where we started off. I'd fight all your fire, carry your pain until it's lighter. If I could, I would cry all your teardrops, wash them away, lift you up higher. If I could, I would take your place. And now, the final result. I'd fight all your fire, carry your pain, until it's lighter. If I could, I would cry all your teardrops, wash them away, lift you up higher. If I could, I would take your place. So that's using the ARA version of Repitch in Pro Tools. Hope that you enjoyed this video, and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.